coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your 7th SDL 2.0 made easy tutorial. And in this tutorial we are going to be doing uh we're going to be doing some joystick and game pad input. So um I'm going to be showing you uh one way how to do the joystick and game pad input in this tutorial and then more of an upgrade version uh, upgraded version on how to do it in the next tutorial. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a lot today. Uh, I hope I actually remember everything. Uh, but uh, without further ado, let's actually let's just get started. So uh, I put error checking here in comments because you may want to uh, actually do a lot some error checking in this program. Uh, it's up to you. I'm not going to, but uh, if you want to, you can. Uh, well, I can show you when you would do some error checking in the program. So for SDL and it, we know when we can do some uh, error checking. Uh, I've already showed you that. But if we want to initialize something different, we can just put the or symbol and then initialize something else. So let's just init the joystick. Uh, so by initializing the joystick, it gives us joystick capabilities. And so, uh, give me a second, let me close the window, the fan just went on, and uh, it's really loud. Alright, so, uh, we have, what we're going to do is create uh, SDL joystick. And it's a pointer to a, a, a joystick, and we're going to, we can set it to null pointer, but we're just going to set it to uh, SDL uh, joystick open and uh, what joystick open does is that okay uh, yeah we might have a bunch of joysticks or game pads or controllers or whatever you want to call them connected to the computer but we can't actually utilize any of their functionality unless we open uh, get access to them right and so uh, game pads are kind of like arrays right they're stored from value 0 to whatever so joystick when we say joystick open 0 we're referring to the first now something you may want to do is before you even run your program you might want to say SDL SDL uh, num joystick or sorry num joysticks and uh, this will return how many joysticks there actually are. So if the joysticks are, if we have less than one joystick, that means we have no joysticks available. Therefore, you can print out an error or tell them that they don't have any joysticks attached or whatever, right? So you can just put error, I don't know, whatever you wanna put and else if then we can actually create our jo joystick if they actually have a joystick connected so that's something you can do for error checking now one thing that uh, I haven't introduced which I, I should introduce is SDL log so it, this is optional uh, but like if you want to do uh, write something uh, some people like log formats better but the format for this is a C style format so if I want to say like uh, the um, just say if I want to write an integer or something and then uh, controllers are inserted or connected or something if I want to put an integer I'd put the percent %d and then I'd actually put a value later on but that's more it more falls a C style print F style but uh, the I guess the cool thing about the SDL log is if we see our console window and sorry about this um, just get rid of this for now so the cool thing about the SDL logs they'll say info and colon and blah 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 blah. So it's mainly there for debug purposes. So but it has the info and caps and it gives you the quote um, the colon there to let you know that it's a piece of info. So you can use the SDL log if you want. Uh, I don't know if I'll be using it that much. I'll probably be just be using C out, but it's there if you want to use it. So anyways, uh, once we actually uh, create our uh, we could check a few properties now first thing we can check to see uh, do some error checking to check if it's null so joyce SDL joystick open either it returns a joystick or it returns null if it fails and you can put an error message 
um, but there's some other stuff that uh, we can do so we can say if error and else we have an else whatever and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check some things and write them to the console application so we're gonna say uh, controller name and we're gonna say SDL joystick name and it asks us for a joystick and we put that there send line we can also get which are important properties we can say uh, the number of axes that we have so SDL joystick num axes pass our joystick in there and we can get the number of buttons so there's other stuff that you can get the numbers uh, for but those are meant for traditional joysticks uh, and I don't think they really have much to do with game pads or controllers which I think majority of people are going to be utilizing so we run this program it tells us that we our controller name my controller is x input uh, controller number one I'm using a PS4 controller and using a program to configure it to Xbox 360 controller settings and the number of axes is 6 and the number of buttons is 15 uh, so now when we to actually uh, execute the joystick event uh, we're going to go to where we actually pull our events so we're going to say okay else if type is equal to joystick uh, SDL underscore joy axis motion so first we're going to actually check for um, um, if an axis is moving so we're just going to say okay ev dot j axis which I assume stands for joystick axis and we can get we can get sorry which axis uh, we're actually on so we can check to see okay if the axis is zero uh, we have we have six different axes axes right so just like um, with the just like arrays we start from zero all the way to five so zero to five gives us six different axes so we're gonna say okay we're gonna check the first one and we're gonna say okay if we're utilizing axis number one and if uh, ev dot axis j axis uh, and the value is less than a certain value then so on and so forth and if it's greater than a certain value then the a certain value then we're gonna show something else but before we even get into that yes we actually got an event of a controller input moving but we what if we want to check for a particular controller so if we want to check for a particular controller we would say j axis which and so uh, it will give us which controller actually configure this event now although I'm using the first controller so usually I'd put zero I'm putting one in this scenario and the reason why I'm putting one is if you check my control panel uh, my can my controller is connected as a wireless controller but because I'm using this other program to uh, configure to Xbox 360 controls it's connected controller one's connected but I want to act I'm getting input from controller number one so it recognizes when I check for the number of controls I have it recognizes it as two controllers uh, but in reality I have one controller but I'm getting input from controller number one from control number two sorry so anyways um, uh, just a heads up why I'm doing that so we can say okay if we're using control number one and the axis is set to zero so uh, whatever then we can get a value now some controller uh, controllers have a, a dead zone and uh, so you don't want it that as soon as they move it a tick then something happens right you want to have sort of a dead zone area so that um, even if they slightly move it a bit or whatever it's not going to actually configure certain things so uh, what we're gonna do is to, to just just to show you something we're just gonna print out the axes uh, axis value so we're just going to print out the value right there 
and as you can see right here we're getting if I move sorry if I move the uh, the left analog uh, the axis 0 is representing the x-axis so if I move it all the way to the right you can see that's the max value and if I move it all the way to the left this is the minimum value so it's between th uh, negative 32767 and uh, positive 32767 so uh, on Usually I see that the dead zone is between, uh, we should put like 8,000 for the dead zone, but you can kind of configure it and see where you want the dead zone to be. So we're going to say that if the axis is uh, less than, so if we're moving it towards the, the left and it's less than negative 8,000, we're going to switch the image. So we're going to say image is equal to image 2, and we're going to say else if the, oh sorry, it should be the well sorry about that so it should be if the axis is equal to zero sorry then we're gonna say if ev.jaxis.value is equal to negative 8000 is less than sorry then we're gonna set the current image equal to image 2 else if the j axis is value is greater than 8000 then we're say we're going to say current image is equal to image 3 and let's run this to see how it how it works so move it to the left sorry got to click the window and i move it and nothing is actually happening so sorry it should be if it's equal to 0 not less than 0 Let's run this one more time and I move to the left we get that I move to the right and we get red so if we want to check for the y-axis then we'll just set the axis equal to 1 the y-axis on the left analog now it might be different depending on your gamepad I'm not entirely too sure uh, based on when I use other API's sometimes it differs between different gamepads but um, I'm not really too sure about SDL uh, but if we move it up we get the f a second image and we move it down we get this image and and so on and so forth so just like I said before we can a good a good thing to do is that you can always have default mappings for uh, your buttons and in the next tutorial uh, or so yeah in the in the tutorial about the actual game uh, game controller um, API uh, whenever if you make a game and you put it on Steam all the default mappings will be set automatically so you can have options to allow users to actually change their buttons right so if you want to have an option for them to change the buttons you can say okay if they move the axe if you say okay set what set like set the left button what well, you want them to press when they move left right you check to see if they if uh, the axis moved and whatever which ax whichever axis they moved that's the button that you'll set for the left movement or whatever you want so there's different things you can do uh, um, to make sure that the joy pa the gamepad or the controller is actually configured correctly um, so that's it for the uh, for the axis and the next con in the next tutorial uh oh sorry well i guess i'll show you the different uh, axes i guess so that's for zero and one is for the left uh i know for two and three for my controllers for the right analog and um we see four and five so four and five are for the uh are for the shoulder buttons for me so uh, for the the trigger so for my left trigger I press it down uh, when I press it down it's positive it's a positive number when I let go it's a negative it's a negative value so if you want me to print out the values I can so we'll just say EVJ axis value so once you run this when I hold it all the way down, as you can see, we see the value. When I hold it halfway, you can see the value in between and so on and so forth. And so you can utilize this to your advantage, right? You can say, okay, if they're holding they're holding down a button um, fully, then 
they move faster or like if you're making a driving game they push it down all the way they're fully throttling they put it down halfway they're not pushing down as fast and so on and so forth so you can do um, different things with that and then for the last one for the last axis that's for the right trigger on my controller and it works the exact same as the left trigger so uh, that's it for the axes in the next uh, tutorial we'll cover the buttons and then after we'll get into actually uh, doing the uh, game controller API so thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe don't forget to like my page on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and don't forget to sign up on my website as well that's it and bye for now